I am going to look like a complete fool right now because I cannot remember if um, Bob, L Bob Dylan did that first or if Peter, Paul, and Mary did it first. I, no, Bob Dylan did it first. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, coming at you today with the next installment of my Tom's A to Z series in which I talk about one album by one artist from each letter of the alphabet approximately, uh, it, which fit a certain criteria that I have uh, spread over, out over the course of that year's cycle. And the theme in this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z is my alphabetical exploration of the House of Records $1 LP section. Yes, I picked out 24 records from the $1 LP section at House of Records. Uh, artists generally that I've never heard of before, a few of them I have, but just, uh, just to see what kind of sort of gems might be hiding in the $1 LP section. And I found a few this year. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes, I do two letters of the alphabet in each episode. This is episode six, so the letters of honor in this episode are K and L. So let's just jump right on in, and the artist representing the letter K this year is Kasav, and this is their album Vinny Pooh. Now, back in February, late January, early February, sometime in February, I think it was, uh, when I just did a big uh, splurge, I just bought up as many, like uh, about 20 of them, I, I guess, uh, of the uh, records I was going to do for the A to Z section, uh, not knowing, of course, that the sh store was going to be shut down a few weeks later, so it was something up there, I guess, told me to uh, to do so. But anyway, this was one of the records that I spotted that made me curious right from the start. I had never heard of Kasav before, and uh, it just looked very interesting. And I saw that most of the uh, song titles, or actually all of the song titles, are in some form of French. It's a very, very um, tangential uh, um, dialect of French, it, sounds, it looks like from the spellings and, not, and whatnot. It actually looked like a blend of French and African, and it turns out I was right. Uh, Kasav is a band from Guadalupe, which is a French territory located in the Caribbean. It's an archipelago in the Caribbean. And the genre is a bit nebulous. When I looked it up on Wikipedia, they credit uh, Kasav's genres as cadence or compa, which are uh, kind of a, a they're, they're basically a Caribbean genre rooted in merengue and calypso music. So kind of, yeah, it's you know Caribbean and in some ways has Spanish influences with merengue. And it, this music, when I listened to it finally uh, a couple weeks ago, reminded me a bit of soca, which is a, uh, it's also, I believe, a Caribbean um, genre of music or, or possibly a Central, Central American or South American genre of music, which uh, has the same general beat structure, kind of, kind of a fast beat, sort of like merengue. Uh, which I have a little bit of experience with soca, not very much, and that is as close of experience as I've had with the genres that Kasav um, deals in. Those uh, genres of cadence and compa, and zouk is another uh, genre that is related to those two, none of which I'd actually even heard heard of before, with, uh, before listening to this album. So this, these album songs are sung entirely in French. It is a, uh, as I said, a Caribbean dialect of French, so uh, I was kind of surprised to see that this album was on a major label like Columbia. It is actually a, a uh, Columbia Records uh, release. And it was released in 1987, uh, incidentally, and this is Kasav's 10th album. So Kasav have uh, have a bit of a track record. It's, you know, and, and another kind of a surprising that I'd never heard of these guys before. Uh, but yeah, this is a very, very interesting album. And uh, yeah, and as I said, I, I can't comment on the lyrics because very few, if any, of the lyrics at all are in English. Uh, but this is honestly this is a party record and you know top to bottom it's a party record it's got those nice fast festival carnival sort of beats on it when you're looking to have a party with a, a caribbean flair find an album by kasav you cannot go wrong it's just great uh, great danceable rhythms and melodies on this album from front to back uh the one possible exception uh, the one that kind of it, it's a bit slower than the rest of the songs it's called soleil and it's the final track on side a and uh, it is the most memorable track for me, as I, as I mentioned on the album. It's a bit of a slower pace than all the other tracks and has you know, just a, a unique uh, sound to it. Uh, just a little bit, set, stands out a little bit from the rest of the album. And it was actually a top 40 single in France. And another track on here, the lead off track, Cie Bois, I, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, went top 20 in France and uh, Soleil went top 40. So they're, they ha have a bit of a uh, chart history in France at least as well as, of course, I'm, I'm sure in the Caribbean. And uh, being a product of the 80s, as I said, this album was put out in, in 87, 
The music employs a lot of synthesizers and drum machines. So uh, probably, whereas in other decades, uh, the decades before and decades since, this kind of music would probably be uh, accompanied by authentic percussion like Western style drums or ethnic percussion relative to the Caribbean and stuff like uh, congas or steel drums or things like that, as well as actual brass and horns. Uh, those components of the music are synthesized mostly uh, for this album, which in a way kind of reminds me of some of the new age music that I listened to back in the late 80s, early 90s. So, but yeah, this is, this is a fun album. It was just very, very interesting, very unique, not like anything else pretty much in my entire music collection. So I was very, very happy to uh, find this, check this out. I picked it up uh, sight unseen or sound unheard, I guess, in this case. Uh, yeah, I was very, very satisfied with this. I'm uh, glad I'm, I'm keeping it. I don't know if I'll bother exploring Kassav's catalog any, uh, any further, but uh, this is very cool. Actually, one of the things that kind of attracts me with this is the fact that, as I said, some of those instruments are synthesized rather than, uh, rather than real uh, instruments. So uh, I, have a, I just kind of wonder if I go to you know, other, other albums where the, that stuff is not synthesized and is real instruments, I might not get the same fascination, uh, uh, exuberance maybe, if that's the right word, that I got with this album. But uh, yeah, Vinnie Pooh by Kassav is a very worthy collection to my catalog, and uh, I'm very happy to have uh, happened upon it in my A to Z. And now onward we go through the alphabet and through Tom's A to Z. We arrive at the letter L, and the letter L in this case stands for Trini Lopez. Yes, as opposed to Kassav, whom I had never heard of before, I had at least heard of Trini Lopez, but I'd never checked out his music before uh, finding this album in the $1 LP sections. Uh, this is, of course, his folk album, as you can see. And this is his 17th album. And actually, it was released in January of 1965. So if I had known about it at the beginning of the year, I could have uh, shouted it out in my Backtracks episode back in January. So, uh, But yes, uh, Trini Lopez actually is uh, kind of an interesting fellow when you look up his bio on Wikipedia. It has a couple of uh, connections to music history as well as history in general. He was born and raised in Texas in the Dallas area. And of course, Buddy Holly was also born and raised in Texas. And so he has a couple of uh, connections naturally with Buddy Holly. But uh, the one weird connection, though, is that uh, the, an early band that Trini Lopez worked with uh, worked at a nightclub that was owned by Jack Ruby. And those of you who know your history, Jack Ruby was the guy that killed Lee Harvey Oswald, who was the guy that assassinated John F. Kennedy. So an interesting little uh, footnote of history there. But yes, uh, Trini Lopez was... Uh, convinced by Buddy's, Buddy Holly's father to audition for the Crickets after Buddy Holly's passing uh, for, as, you know, for their lead vocalist. And unfortunately, he auditioned a few times for the Crickets, but was turned down. But in some ways, maybe that was a good thing in that uh, later on that same year, 1962, uh, he was playing at another nightclub in the Dallas area, and Frank Sinatra was in the audience, happened to hear him, and liked what he heard, and signed him to his own label, Reprise Records. So, and the rest is history. And uh, I, I kind of, I can't blame Frank Sinatra because, uh, for liking what he heard because I like what I heard listening to this album. Clever little segue there, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm kind of upset with myself that I had not uh, found out about Trini Lopez or really listened to his music until this year because he's got a very, very nice voice, very light and airy and just very, has a very pleasant uh, cadence to it, I guess is the right word. I don't, I have no idea. I'm just making up words here. But uh but yeah, it's just a very, very pleasing voice to the ear, and his song stylings are very nice. But yeah, this is just full of, as you can imagine by the title of the album, a bunch of traditional folk songs and more recent or contemporary uh, folk songs of the period. Uh, Lemon Tree was actually one of the two singles off of this album that uh, charted uh, both Lemon Tree and another single off this album, Michael Row Your Boat Ashore, both hit the top ten of the adult contemporary chart, the Billboard adult contemporary chart, and Lemon Tree, which is the opening track on this album, was top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. So, uh, yeah, there are a couple of good uh, uh, singles on there. And yeah, I really, really like Lemon Tree that opens up the album, as I said. Uh, Greenback Dollar is probably the most upbeat track on the album. It's got, you know, the, the, it's got the strongest beat of all the any of the other songs on the album. That's a really good one, too. And he does uh, covers of Puff the Magic Dragon, which was, of course, made famous by Peter, Paul, and Mary, as well as Blowing in the Wind, the Bob Dylan song. He does a fantastic rendition of that as well. I mean, he, he does a great job on all these songs, let's face it. And uh, We'll Sing in the Sunshine, which I cannot remember. I should have written it down. Who made that song really popular? I cannot remember. I, it wasn't Trini Lopez that made it really popular 
in the 60s. But uh, yeah, that one. Uh, Don't Think Twice It's Alright, which wasn't that a Bob Dylan song also, I think? I can't remember. I should have written that down. And uh, But yeah, just as I said, from uh, one end of this album to the other, so a very, very pleasing, um, satisfying, enjoyable set of folk songs, folk renditions uh, by Trini Lopez. And I am very interested in checking out more of his stuff uh, as, as I happen upon it, because yeah, I, as pleased as I was with this album, I can't imagine not being pleased with uh, any of the other albums that uh, he's, got. he's got a couple of uh, a couple of them advertised in the back of this record. Uh, the Latin album, that could be interesting. Isn't every album a Latin album if it's Trini Lopez? Probably a tenuous theory there, but anyway. Yes, two very enjoyable additions to Tom's A to Z for this month. I, I really, really enjoyed both of those albums. Oh, and uh, before I mention, the folk album by Trini Lopez actually hit number 18 on the Billboard 200 album charts. So yeah, it was a top 20 album. So there you go. That, that speaks to his popularity, doesn't it? But anyway, that'll do it for Tom's A to Z for the month of June. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms? Lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.